Have you ever pulled a shocker strut out of the box and the rod didn't immediately extend? Or did it extend slower than units you've seen in the past? In this program, we're going to highlight how and why some shocks and struts are made with lower or no gas charges, as well as an important pre-installation tip. Not all cars are the same, so it makes sense that shocks and struts are designed specific to each application. Some units may have high hydraulic control and lower gas pressure. The hydraulic portion provides control, and the correct gas pressure allows consistent performance. There are differences in low-speed hydraulic control. For example, one unit that extends slower might actually have better low-speed control. The hydraulic part of the shock is what provides performance, while the gas portion allows hydraulic fluid to perform more consistently. There are a few vehicles that are equipped OE without gas-charged shocks or struts. Sometimes if you replace these particular units with a gas-charged unit, the vehicle may have increased noise, vibration, and harshness. The engineering teams at Tenneco work with many OE manufacturers and leverage that experience when releasing aftermarket products. Tenneco engineers utilize high, standard, low, and no gas pressure as needed for each application. Tenneco offers the right hydraulic control and gas pressurization for each application, delivering the correct ride profile for that vehicle. The resistance to movement for rebound and compression are controlled by oil flow through multiple passageways from the unit. In some applications, the oil can foam or become aerated, which may result in a harsh ride and inconsistent control. Pressurizing the unit through the addition of gas charging reduces the negative effects of aeration. Most shocks and struts are designed to function in a vertical or up or down position. However, before they are installed, they are generally stored on their side. This can cause the gas charging within a shock or strut to mix with the hydraulic fluid, resulting in the unit appearing to be defective right out of the box, which is not the case. Simply priming the shock or strut before installing can resolve the issue. To prime or check rod reaction on ride control units, follow this process. One, make sure unit is at room temperature. Two, cycle unit from full extension to full compression two to three times with the rod facing up. Three, fully compress unit and allow the rod to extend on its own. This should require less than 45 seconds on a unit with normal gas pressure and up to two minutes for a low gas unit. If the unit fully extends to these specs, it is considered fully functional.
4. Non-gas units will not extend. 5. It is not uncommon for two light units to extend at different speeds until they are broken in. 6. Due to the single tube construction, monotubes do not need to be primed. 